Good morning, MCBC. Thanks for joining us today on Sunday morning. Um, I know the weather's great outside, but unfortunately we have to stay inside. But thanks for joining us on this Palm Sunday. Um, we hope you're still doing okay at home, um, trying to stay busy, trying to stay sane. Um, yeah, just welcome to MCBC worship service and uh, feel free to worship with us as you will. If you want to sit on your couch, if you still in your PJs, that's fine too. If you want to get up and sing and dance, that's okay. Um, but uh, thank God for this technology that we can still worship together. So um, yeah, we're going to get started. verse in Mark 6, chapter 50, uh, sorry, chapter 6, verse 50, um, take courage, it is I, don't be afraid. He reminded us of how to practice the presence of Jesus, and so if you've been having a hard time doing that um, in social isolation, um, we hope and pray that you are able to do that um, now with us this time. And remember that we have a God who is, uh, even in this chaos, the God of the city.
to come when things are still to be done in this city. And greater things have yet to come. Greater things are still to be done here. Let's sing, you're the God of the city again. All right, good morning. And we're doing a new segment here called Real People, Real Faith. And what this is, is that we're just uh, talking to various people at our church during this time and just seeing how they're doing and just asking uh, what we can be praying for. So this morning I have Adrian with me. Say hi, Adrian. Hello. And so Adrian is one of our worship leaders at our church. She also serves in our youth ministry as a youth worker. And she's also studying full time right now at seminary. So um, Adrian, during this time right now uh, of all this uh, pandemic talk, uh, what's one thing you can still be thankful for uh, as you've uh, gone through this situation? Uh, I think the biggest thing that I've been thankful for right now is the community around me. Um, it's been really good, even though we're not physically present, there's just been a rallying of people together to still meet up. Um, so at the beginning of this pandemic, my dad was a little bit sick. And so we were trying to avoid going out and a lot of people in our immediate community were dropping off groceries for us and doing things like that. And we've even been able to have a couple of online birthday parties, which has been really nice. That's cool. That's nice. All right. So um, just as we've been going through this entire situation, what's one thing you'd like us to be praying for? I think what's been on my heart to pray for right now are uh, organizations like Open Door, um, Sanctuary in the Dale, who are working with uh, people in our shelter system and the homeless. And they've just been having a lot of difficulty right now with supplies and even how to care for people during social isolation. So if we could pray for them. Sure. So what we're going to do, we're going to take that time now to pray and uh, put that into prayer. So just join with me if you can. Uh, God, we want to thank you for um, just how you've been blessing Adrian and her family. We thank you for the very fact that there's been community around her and and even um, as her dad was sick and he's gotten better, 
uh, and just praying and thanking you for the people who've just been able to gather and support uh, her and her family online um, and even physically by providing things. Uh, Lord, today we want to just lift up to you our community. We know that um, many uh, organizations out there that serve the disenfranchised and the homeless, we thank you for uh, their faithfulness to do that. But Lord, we also recognize that in this time of social distancing, it's hard to uh, be able to minister to the, the needs of the felt needs of people. Uh, so we want to lift up some of these organizations, places like the Sanctuary, um, places like the Dale, um, our Open Door in Mississauga, other places in Toronto like Scott Mission, uh, Covenant House, and Young Street Mission. Uh, we thank you for their faithfulness in the work that they do, and we pray that you give their leaders and workers wisdom uh, to know how to handle this this unprecedented situation and to be able to love people um, in a way that's safe and still protecting themselves and protecting others. Uh, Lord, for many of us, we're comfortable in our homes, and we thank you for that, uh, that you provide us shelter. And there are many in our city who, who don't have a place where they can rest their head called a home. And so we pray for them today and ask that you will watch over them and keep them protected and safe as well during this entire ordeal. And so we thank you again for uh, just your goodness to us. Um, we pray that you continue to give um, guidance and, and direction to those who serve uh, the disenfranchised. So we pray this today in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. All right. Thanks a lot, Adrian, for doing this. And we'll see you next time. All right. Thank you. Bye. All right. Hi and good morning. Uh, welcome to our live stream. Thank you for joining us. Today is Sunday, April the 5th. Um, so we're glad you're here with us, church. And those of you who are just tuning in, uh, just checking us out, we're just glad you came. I just wanted to start off just very quickly to say um, just we're having something special this Friday. It's uh, Good Friday. Um, so if you're able to, uh, we want to invite you to join us online as well as we live stream a Good Friday service. It's going to be at 10 a.m. again on this Good Friday, um, this Friday, April the 10th at 10 a.m. If you want to join us for that as well, obviously, after that on next Sunday, uh, Easter Sunday, we're also going to continue to have our usual live stream service as well. So it's Easter season. It's a great uh, season for us as Christians. Uh, so let's celebrate as we can right now online together on Good Friday and also on Easter Sunday. Uh, today is April 5th. It's Palm Sunday uh, for those of you who celebrate Palm Sunday on the Christian calendar. Uh, but for us at our church, uh, just because of the circumstances of the world, um, we do want to address the things that go on in this world. And so we've been just doing a different sermon series uh, up until this point today, we're just going to continue with that. We've been doing a sermon series called uh, Facing uh, Fear with Faith. And it's just because we see the times that we're in and we're just struggling and we're maybe dealing with so many different things that maybe you just need some encouragement. So that's why we've been doing this series. Uh, after Easter, our hope is that we can kind of go back to our usual sermon series that, uh, and pick it up where we left off. And so um, after Easter, we're going to be looking at our spiritual disciplines again. So if you want to tune in after Easter for that, that'd be great. Um, but today, I just want to focus in on, again, how do we face fear with faith? And this morning, we have a passage for you. It's taken from the Gospel of Matthew, uh, chapter 6, verses 19 to 34. Matthew, chapter 6, verse 19 to 34. Here's what it says. Um, Therefore, I tell you, uh, do not store up for yourselves treasures on earth where moth and, and where thieves break in and steal. Store up for yourselves treasure in heaven where moths and vermin do not destroy and where thieves do not break in and steal. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. The eye is the lamp of the body. If your eyes are healthy, your whole body will be full of light. But if your eyes are unhealthy, your whole body will be full of darkness. If then the light within you is darkness, how great is that darkness? No one can serve two masters. Either you will hate one and love the other, or you will be devoted to one and despise the other. You cannot serve both God and money. Therefore, I tell you, do not worry about your life, what you will eat or drink, or about your body, what you will wear. Is not life more than food and body more than clothes? Look at the birds of the air. They, they do not sow or reap or store away in barns, and yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not much more valuable than they? Can any one of you be worrying and add a single hour to your life? 
And why do you worry about clothes? See how the flowers of the field grow? They do not labor or spin. Yet I tell you that not even Solomon in all his splendor was dressed like one of these. If that is how God clothes the grass of the field, which is here today and tomorrow is thrown into the fire, will he not much more clothe you, you of little faith? So do not worry, saying, what shall we eat, or what shall we drink, or what shall we wear? For the pagans run after all these things, and your heavenly Father knows that you need them. But seek first his kingdom and his righteousness, and all these things will be given to you as well. Therefore, do not worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will worry about itself. Each day has enough trouble on its own. Uh, so here's a, a passage that we have from uh, Jesus, and he's just encouraging us. Uh, it's part of a greater discourse that Jesus has called the Sermon on the Mount, one of the greatest uh, sort of teachings of Jesus, a whole segment on his teachings. Um, and so in this passage here, he gives us three simple commands, uh, if you want to look at it. And there are three simple things, and he invites us to choose wisely. Um, throughout his entire series on the Sermon on the Mount, Jesus gives um, information and gives ideas to people, but there are also commands that he gives. And some of these commands also have consequences, whether negative or positive consequences. Uh, but this is one of those sections where he doesn't give just a command. He gives a command, but he gives the reasons for it. But as he gives the reasons for it, he's not um, giving the necessary the consequences of it. He's not giving the, uh, if you do this, then this kind of comments. He's kind of encouraging us to think through this, to choose wisely because we have a choice to make. And so he's giving us these two different um, extremes all the time uh, and a choice that we need to make. So one of the first things he says for us here is in verse 19. He says, uh, do not store up for yourselves treasures on earth where moth and rust destroy. Rather, store up treasures in heaven. So we're going to be talking a bit about that. What does it mean to store up treasures in heaven? What does it mean to lay up treasures in heaven? And so the first thing that I want to just sort of give us an idea about is that this is not a ban on having things. Uh, some people take that a little bit too extreme. This is not a bad thing. It's not about a ban on having possessions. It's not about uh, a criticism of the idea of saving for a rainy day. It's not about those kinds of things. Um, Jesus is actually saying to us that we need to just really consider how are we doing with our selfishness? How are we doing with our accumulation of stuff? How are we doing with our extravagance or our luxury? And in fact, he's trying to convince us or he's trying to tell us to choose wisely that we don't just store up unnecessary things in this world because eventually those things will get destroyed. They get taken away from us. And so he'd rather say reinvest what you're doing. Um, the idea is that he'd rather us distribute rather than to accumulate. See, the re idea is this is because our earthly stuff is not our final destination. Our earthly stuff is not a final destination. We have a final destination, a, a full-on relationship with God that brings us into an eternal relationship with him called heaven. And if that's our final destination, you can't bring any of this stuff with you anyways. And it's like, I try to remember, I remember a, a period of time in my life, my wife and I, we had bought a house and we had bought this house, but we were waiting for it to be built. And so while we were waiting for it to be built, it was going to be about a year, uh, we had to rent a condo. And so here we were in this condo and we knew that we were going to be in this condo for one year and then we would get into our new house at that point. Um, and so we had moved all of our stuff into storage or we had moved all of our stuff into this condo. Uh, but during this time, there was also a temptation for us to just go and buy more furniture, to go and get more stuff. And when you're doing that, you're thinking, well, where am I going to put this stuff? I have, I've only got this uh, condo here and, and our storage units are full. And in fact, to store more stuff in this condo wouldn't make sense because this is not where we're going to end up. We're going to end up in something else. We, we know we have something else coming. It's, it's just a year away. And so furniture and accumulation of stuff, there was no point in doing that. And so we were just challenging ourselves. Hey, we don't need to necessarily buy this or get this or get that at this point. And I think that's the same thing here is that we need to reconsider sometimes what are we getting and why are we getting it? Again, it's not a ban on having stuff. It's not a ban on the idea of saving, those things are still good, but it's the selfishness that Jesus is addressing, the overabundance of doing stuff like this. And you know, in this time where we're struggling right now and, and people are anxious and worried, uh, one of our great um, anxieties is how much stuff we have. And, and sometimes it looks like hoarding. And, and you know, we've been talking about this, like 
out toilet paper or Lysol wipes or alcohol. They're all just, people are just hoarding it and they're all gone. Um, and we just start to accumulate as much stuff. And again, we're just trying to say, Jesus is trying to remind us, hey, think about that again. Because the, the ability to accumulate is not for us to keep. The ability to accumulate is for us to give away. It's for us to give away. So I'm going to invite you to think about that. How can you give? How can you give in a way that is helpful to others? Where can you give? Um, this morning, if you were watching that testimony thing uh, that Adrian was sharing, uh, there are still food banks out there that need food uh, to give to people. There's uh, maybe a neighbor in, on your street that may need an item or two. And if you send them a text or, or just go to their your neighbor and knock on the door and say, hey, do you need anything? I still have some of these things. Do you need any of these things? Um, try doing that. And so the idea is that we're not supposed to lay up treasures on earth, uh, but really store and lay up treasures in heaven, doing things God's way, uh, where uh, eventually these things on earth, they, they pass away. Um, you can't take it with you, right? And so God is just, Jesus is challenging us, think about where you're putting your stuff. Do more things to honor God and do more things to show love to people. That's where you're going to store up treasures in heaven, when you're showing love to people, when you're giving away to people. So he transitions then, Jesus transitions in his thought process here. He gives us then uh, this word, therefore, in verse 25. He says, therefore, I tell you, do not worry about your life. Do not be anxious. Um, that's the key word, therefore. Some people wonder, well, you know, when you see the word therefore, you have to ask yourself, what is it there for? And that's what links this section back to the previous section. Um, and so Jesus is going to address this idea of anxiety. He's going to address this idea of worry. And he says it three times in verse 25, in verse 31, and in verse 34. He says, do not worry or do not be anxious. And I think it's because Jesus does indeed want us to live uh, a, an anxious, free existence. He cares about us. And, and we know that uh, anxiety and worry can be crippling uh, for us. Uh, one of the things that I love about our church is that we've been doing things every January in conjunction with the Bell Lads Talk Month to talk about things like mental health. And this past year, we went and did a whole discussion dialogue on anxiety. And it was a great time to learn. Um, but all of us, we will have irrational and rational uh, anxiety attacks. We will all have differing ways that we're going to handle anxiety. And one of the things that we learned this year was that every one of us has anxiety. We just fall on a spectrum of uh, extremes. And sometimes certain things will trigger us to be more anxious and other things uh, that maybe bother you won't bother me so much, but things that bother me won't bother you so much. Uh, but I don't think that Jesus wants us to be anxious. He wants to give us uh, peace. And so he's telling us and challenging us, don't be anxious, do not be worried. Now, again, it's not an indictment that if you worry or if you're anxious, you've done something wrong. That's not what he's getting at because there is no indictment here about it. What he's trying to do is he's just trying to give us reasons not to worry. So he starts off with reason number one. Um, he says this, do not worry about your life, what you'll eat or drink or worry about your body, what you'll wear. Is not life more than food and the body more than clothes? I think I, I can address the clothes thing today. Um, most of us, because we're staying home, we really don't even care what we're wearing. Uh, you look at me right now and I'm wearing this t-shirt. Uh, what you don't see is I'm just wearing shorts. Uh, who cares at this point what we're wearing, really? Um, and for some of you, that's a great thing because, hey, it's less laundry to do. You just stick, you can go to church. How many of you ever gone to church in your PJs, right? We, we don't necessarily have PJ Sunday, but every day right now, every Sunday can be PJ Sunday. So why do we have to worry about what we're wearing? You guys can grasp that today. But he's saying also, why do you need to worry about food? Now, here's the thing. We're sitting here. How do you not worry about food in a time like this? And we need food to live, don't we? And we need food to live and we need water to drink. And, and you know, if we went out in public, we'd probably be shamed to death if we weren't wearing clothes, right? So what is Jesus getting at? He's saying about this. Don't be anxious about your life and your body. What he's getting at is that the word life there is the word for your soul. And he's saying, do not be worried about your soul. He's, I think what he's doing is he's reminding us that our life is more than just the physical body that we have. It's more than just food. It's more than just clothes. That you and I, if we have this relationship with Jesus, we have a life that is beyond this physical. We have a spiritual life. And to re be reminded that there's more than this. There's more to life than this. 
And so remember your faith in Jesus. Remember that relationship you have with Jesus. Remember that there is eternity that goes beyond what is happening today. And it's a perspective issue. He says you can worry about today and, and what you see going on today, or you can think that, hey, beyond all of that, beyond all of that, there's something more. And so no matter what happens, even if the worst happens, you have no food, you have no drink, you have no clothes. And yes, even if you have no more life, he's saying there is something more. It's called life everlasting, that relationship with Jesus in heaven. And so he's giving us that perspective today, saying that's why you don't need to worry. If you have this life everlasting, you don't need to worry. And so he's trying to just encourage us with that. And so he goes on in verse 26, he says, well, how can I convince you more? How can I convince you more? And so the, the other days I've been going on bike rides with my kids. They've made these wonderful trails uh, in our neighborhood. So we've been going for about seven to 10K bike rides uh, in the afternoon. Uh, this is one particular section on the trail. As you drive, as you ride by, um, there's these, all these birds just chirping, chirping, chirping. It's really almost annoying uh, at times. But as you go by, there's all these birds chirping. And what this reminded me is that God is in control of nature. God says, I am in control. I created everything and I am in control of nature. So you know those birds that are chirping? They get fed. They get fed. Whether it's an insect that they go and hunt or whether it's a worm they pull from the ground, they get fed. And if they get fed, it's because God is doing that. And if God is doing that, he reminds us of this one simple truth. You and I are more important than the birds. You and I are more important. That if God would take care of birds that way, he will take care of you and he'll take care of me much more than he takes care of those birds. And so he reminds us then, um, yeah, why, why worry? He's trying to convince us, you don't need to worry because I, God, am going to take care of you. He continues on in verse 27. He says it this way. Um, Can any one of you by worrying add a single hour to your life? Can any one of you by worrying add a single hour to your life? And so in verse 27, he just simply says, again, anxiety, worry, they don't accomplish anything. They don't accomplish anything. It does not help us. It solves nothing. It contributes little value to life. Situations don't get resolved. Problems don't get solved. So why worry? Because anxiety and worry, they won't help you. They don't do anything. All they do is just make us paralyzed, in fact, a lot of the times. And so he goes on in verses 28 to 30. He says, and see, uh, why do you worry about clothes? See the flowers of the field and how they grow. And it's, he's just going on again about this idea, almost like the birds. Again, you are more valuable than birds. Um, see, grass and flowers, they don't last long. They don't last long. Um, our house here, we have these plants all over the place. And, and a lot of times we kill plants. And we have a garden out front. And we have a garden in the back. And again, every winter they all die, right? Um, but grass and flowers, they don't last. And yet God still clothes them. And if God would do that for grass and for flowers, and you and I are more valuable than that, then he would do so more for us. God works through nature around us, and God is involved in nature, but he's more heavily involved, heavily involved with you and with me. And so in verse 30, he's just asking us, would we trust him? Would we just simply trust him? If this is how God clothes the grass of the field, which is here today and tomorrow is thrown into the fire, Will he not much more clothe you, you of little faith? And he's just challenging you of little faith. He's just saying, trust me, put more faith in me. Trust me more so and trust me more completely. And so in verse 31, he continues, don't be anxious in the ways like the rest of the world. And it's again, it's not a criticism of, of the world. It's more so to say and remind us, we know God. If you're a Christian and you have a relationship with God, we know God. And that is our greatest blessing. Others who don't know God, don't be anxious like them because you have God. You have Jesus. Again, it's not an indictment. Um, and it's not to say things like therapy or medication are not good. Those are good things. But he's saying you have this one extra person in your life, God himself. Um, so as believers, we have someone of great value that God himself is with us. And so, again, he's reminding us to this idea of just trust. Because in verse 32, he reminds us, God knows what you need. And God is this perfect 
father who knows exactly what you need. He knows exactly what you need and what I need. You know, nobody else does. Nobody else knows. Haven't you ever, have you ever gone to someone um, asking, uh, just wanting to share what, you, what you're going through and they just give you advice after advice and that advice is absolutely nothing you need? Um, I've had that a lot of times where you're just sharing with someone and they just want to tell you how to overcome or tell you what to do and, and you listen to it. And you're like, that is actually not even close to what I need. God says, I know exactly what you need. He knows exactly who you are and he knows exactly what you would need. And I think that's a great, great truth for us today as we continue to face fear with faith. And so, again, we started off with the idea of Jesus' command is like, first, lay up treasures in heaven. The second that his, his command is, don't be anxious or do not worry. And then the third command that he gives us now is in verse 33. He says, have this perspective. He says, seek first of the kingdom of God. Seek first God's kingdom. Seek first God's righteousness. And that's the perspective that you and I are called to. Um, if we follow Jesus, you and I are called to seek God's purposes, seek God's kingdom, his advance, the advancement of his kingdom, seek God's righteousness. Um, God will give us always everything that we need to accomplish his will and his purposes. He doesn't always give us the things we need to accomplish what we want, but he always gives us the things that we would need to accomplish what he is doing. So this is not just about our physical comforts. It's more than that, but it's the idea and challenge to seek and to do God's will, to seek God's kingdom principles uh, in your life and in my life. And so God is in reminding us, look for those things. Look for how righteousness is to be played out. Look for things like justice. How can we be part of what God's kingdom advancement is? To give love, to give grace, to give mercy. And so he's saying, have that perspective always. My kingdom first, not your own wants, not your own uh, kingdom, but God's kingdom first. And so the last thing he then encourages us with is every day has enough of its own. He won't overload us. God does not overload us in a day. And each day has enough of its own. We will receive enough uh, for each day. Uh, so what does this all mean for us? Uh, some of these practical things that I'm just thinking through uh, today. Uh, a couple practical things. If you've got kids, young kids, uh, I just want to encourage you and challenge you. Um, Go to your basement or go to where you stuff all your toys. And when you do that, you're going to realize how much stuff there is, right? And ask your kids, hey, is there something here that we can give away uh, to someone else? Is there something here that we can give away to someone else, like a, a special toy or an unwrapped toy even? But you know what? Before you do that, just clean it up, right? Just, just sanitize it a bit. And, and maybe go to a neighbor um, who has young kids and knock on the door and say, hey, we have this, we'd like to give it away. We've cleaned it for you. Uh, we'd love to give it away. And, and it will benefit another child. Or if you know someone who just had a baby um, and they're looking for little things uh, that you used to have, that you accumulated uh, for your child when they were a baby. Uh, maybe try this, uh, this this coming week. Place an item on your front yard. Again, clean it first, um, but put a tag on it, free or take. Uh, place an item that, that, that you just don't need anymore, that, that you're just holding on to. Place it on in front of you and just give it away. Maybe it's a bicycle that you haven't ridden in over 10 years. Maybe it's that, that exercise machine um, that's been collecting dust. Or maybe it's that extra TV that's been sitting in your bedroom that you never watch and that still works. Um, give it away. Give it away. Uh, maybe this week as you go about your groceries, uh, maybe just go as you're going out to your grocery shopping, um, buy an extra something. Buy an extra something that you can give to a neighbor. Again, when you get back, clean it. Uh, but when you bring it back, clean it up, go to your neighbor's house, drop it off and say, hey, I went to the grocery store. I got this extra something. I just want to give it to you and, and just do that. Um, so give it, give it away. And so, again, Jesus is just saying and reminding us today, lay up your treasures in heaven, not on earth. Um, again, when you start doing that, he's then reminding us, do not be anxious. Do not worry. Again, you will have anxieties, you will have worries, and it's not a bad thing. Jesus is not criticizing you. He's just encouraging us, there's more than that. There's more to life than that. And seek first his kingdom. Seek to do things God's way. Seek to do things uh, with his purposes in mind. Um, that's how we're supposed to be called to live as Christians. And it's very different from sometimes how the world is going right now, where everyone is rushing off and accumulating as much as we can. Uh, even without this, um, stuff, this COVID-19 stuff. We were always living this way. We were accumulating as much as we can. And that's not God's and that's not God's way. So I want to encourage you with that and challenge you with that this week. Uh, so at this time, I'm going to bring it over back to 
Uh, Melissa, she's just going to lead us in a, in a song again to just remind us of God's goodness. Um, so take it away, Melissa. Thanks for the message, uh, Reverend Ken. Um, yeah, and as he reminded us, let us keep remembering um, how good our God is and, and how he is in control and sovereign over everything. And um, because we have a relationship, if we, who are we going to fear? Because God is on our side. darkness fills the night it cannot hide the light whom shall I fear you crush the enemy underneath my feet you are my sword and shield though troubles linger still whom shall So thank you so much uh, for joining us uh, today. I just want to stop here by praying for each and every one of you who are tuning in. Uh, so would you join me in prayer? God, we just want to thank you for uh, the very fact that you know us. Um, and as today, you've directed us to, to consider how we live uh, in a way that honors you. So help us to really um, live in a way that stores up treasures in heaven by doing things uh, like acting out in grace, in mercy, uh, in love towards others. Uh, in doing so, God, please also help us as we deal with our anxieties and worries, especially given the circumstances of our world today. Um, so where we find ourselves overwhelmed, God, would you remind us that you are with us, uh, that you love us, and that you are taking care of us. 
um, and that God, you'll continue to do so. And bless us, Lord, to seek first uh, your kingdom, seek first what you're doing uh, by showing care and love to others as well, and not to just look out for ourselves, uh, especially during this time. Uh, so bless us this week as we continue to go about our, our daily lives, those of us struggling with new routines, praying for our students um, in, in uh, primary school and high school who will be going through online learning now, praying for our university students as they're wrapping up things, praying for those of us who have to work from home to be able to balance between our families and our work, praying, praying for those of us who still go to work because we're considered non-essentials, that Lord, you will uh, continue to encourage us and strengthen us. Um, help us, Lord, to see people with your eyes, see our neighbors and see our family through the eyes of Jesus. So bless us this day, we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. So at this point, uh, thank you for joining us. Uh, we hope again that you'll come see us on Friday, Good Friday, uh, at 10 a.m. Uh, if you want as well, uh, just continue to share with others, uh, just to tune in uh, on Good Friday, also on Sunday. Uh, next Sunday, as we do our live stream at 9.30, what we're trying to do after the service is also have a, a chat discussion. I know some of you guys may have questions and answers, so we're trying to set that up. We're doing our best to set that up, and we hope we can get that going by next Sunday as well. Um, so we'll see you again. Um, and if you stick around a bit, uh, there's a couple of announcement slides if you have it, if you missed it at the beginning. But other than that, have a great rest of your week, and we'll see you again. Love and peace.